How to beat Pep Guardiola, Norwich 3, Manchester City 2, a tactical analysis. In this video I'll be tactically analysing how Norwich beat Manchester City and what potential flaws they exposed in Guardiola's system that could be used by other teams this season. So keep watching till the end to see the full in-depth analysis. But before this video starts make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when we upload a video and don't miss out on any of the videos coming up over the next few weeks and give this video a like if you enjoy it. Also check out our two most recent uploads, a tactical analysis of Manchester United 1, Leicester 0 and our video analysing how Diego Simeone is tactically reinventing Atletico Madrid this season. Going into the game, Daniel Farker lined up his side in a 4-4-1-1 system with Tim Kaur in goal, Ben Godfrey and Ibrahim Amadou at centre-back with Sam Byram at right-back, Jamal Lewis at left-back. The midfield double pivot was Alexander Tete and Kenny McLean with Todd Campwell on the left, Emi Brendia on the right and Marco Stieperman in behind Timmy Puki. Guardiola's side set up in their usual 4-3-3 with Kyle Walker and Alexander Zinchenko playing as the fullbacks, Otamendi and Stones as centre-backs, with a midfield three of Rodri with David Silva and Ilkay Gundogan ahead of him, while Sterling started on the left, Bernardo Silva on the right and Aguero up front. The game started as you would have expected with City dominating possession. Norwich set off City centre-backs when they had the ball in a 4-2-3-1 shape, with the two central midfielders Tete and McLean sitting deep to close off the space between the midfield and the defence, where the two advanced central midfielders for City, in this game Gundogan and David Silva, moved into when City had deep possession. Walker was sitting deeper than Zinchenko on the left side, who was pushing further forward to maintain the width in the system, and this created a wide back three for City, from which they could switch the sides of play easily, and Stones could move out of the back line with the ball. You can see that both Tete and McLean were well aware of the central midfielder's movement further up the pitch into the half spaces, which is why they would adjust their positioning slightly in order to cut off the passing lanes when Stones or Rodri had the ball. Norwich defended deep but very well in a structured two banks of four system, and when they won the ball they were able to exploit a fundamental weakness in City's pressing system. When they regained possession around their own box, the Norwich players were very composed on the ball and didn't seek to play a long direct ball up to Puki, which would have almost certainly conceded possession back to Guardiola's side and enabled them to sustain attacks and the pressure on Norwich. Instead, they looked to play short passes around City's press, and in particular the fullbacks, central midfielders and wide midfielders were all excellent at doing this. And this is where Norwich's second goal came from after they exposed one of City's weaknesses for the first goal, which came from a near post run from a corner. When City looked to instantly press when they lost the ball high up the pitch, they committed a lot of players forward into advanced areas, with the two central midfielders pushing forward to press the deep line central midfielders for Norwich, which left Rodri with the task of covering a lot of the centre of the park. When Brundia had the ball in the middle of the pitch, after Norwich were able to play through the press, Rodri should have done what Fernandinho was so excellent at doing last season and made a tactical foul to stop the attack. Instead, Rodri was beaten too easily and this left Brundia running at the City back line. Otamendi was positionally undisciplined and followed Steeperman and vacated his central position and in turn this made it easy for Puki to make a run in behind the City back line before squaring the ball to Cantwell. Stones probably should have followed Puki's run but was in two minds and not decisive enough which highlights City's centre back issues. Going into the second half you would have forgave Norwich if they had sat slightly deeper in a more compact shape in order to retain their lead but the interval didn't seem to change their game plan. From City's build up, Norwich committed three players forward to start the press, with Steeperman cutting off the passing lane into Rodri, whilst Brendier and Puki sat either side of him, creating a narrow front three, moving aggressively to press the centre backs when they received the ball from Edison. This is where the third Norwich goal came from, as Otamendi was shamefully over relaxed on the ball, allowing Brendier to take it off of him in his own box and great for Puki to put into the net. With City in an unfamiliar position, Guardiola began to commit more players forward to the attack. Otamendi and Stones were playing like deep line midfielders when in possession, while Zinchenko sat incredibly narrow and high, with Sterling and Bernardo Silva keeping the width on the flanks. Guardiola brought on De Bruyne and Gabriel Jesus, moving the side into a 4-4-2, with De Bruyne playing in a double pivot with Rodri out of possession, but moving forward into the half spaces when City had the ball. A fundamental reason for City not being able to break down this Norwich side was the fullback Sam Byram and Jamal Lewis who were exceptional in one-on-one -on -one situations against Sterling and Bernardo Silva. City funneled their attacks down the flanks trying to isolate the fullbacks in one-on-one -on -one situations where the wide players can either dribble past them or play a pass into the space between the centre-back and fullback where the advanced central midfielders will look to make a run into. Because the fullbacks stood up to Sterling and Bernardo Silva and weren't beaten easily, and the defensive midfielders Tete and McLean were very good at tracking Gundogan and Silva when they looked to make runs underlapping the wingers, City were frustrated for much of the game, resulting to passes backwards across the pitch in deep positions or to crosses into the box which other than for Aguero's goal were easily dealt with. So overall what were the weaknesses in City and Pep's system that Norwich were able to exploit in order to pull off this shock victory? 
Well, the first and most significant weakness that was exposed was the space in behind City's midfield when they looked to press the opposition from their build-up. If sides are prepared to take a measured risk by attempting to play out from the back, by pushing the full-backs wide and by playing a midfield double pivot to draw the City central midfielders higher up the pitch, and the attacker midfielders can move centrally into the space either side of Rodri, from where one incisive pass from the deep block can open up the whole City defensive structure as Norwich were able to do. The second weakness exposed was a lack of positional awareness from the two City centre-backs, Stones and Otamendi. When Norwich broke past the midfield and were running at the back line, the movement of Puki and Steeperman, first moving deep and then spinning in behind into the space, caused both centre-backs all sorts of problems. It seemed like they didn't know whether they were meant to hold their line and play an offside trap, or drop deep to cover the space. The two full-backs, Walker and Zinchenko, were just as bad positionally as the two centre-backs, and it's clear to see why. City have been so good in the last few seasons at being able to assert an aggressive press and stop sides even being able to get into this sort of position, so it seems that City's defenders just aren't used to defending this sort of situation, which was the case during Pep's first season, when City's backline resembled a sheet of cling film trying to stop a bowling ball. Whilst exposing City's defensive weaknesses, Norwich also showed that by playing a deep midfield double pivot, tracking the advanced midfielders' runs, and having fullbacks who are very good in one-on-one -on -one defensive situations, sides so can negate a massive part of City's attack, which is the midfield underlap which the likes of De Bruyne and Silva love to do, and is an attacking pattern that has been so effective for Guardiola's side in the last two seasons. So whilst this result was certainly a shock, you can't consider it a fluke, and Premier League side should be using Daniel Farker's tactical plan in this game as a template to use against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City for the rest of this season. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.